Psalm 57 Have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God Most High, to God who vindicates me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart, O God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Psalm 58 Do you, rulers, indeed speak justly? Do you judge people with equity? No. In your heart you devise injustice, and your hands mete out violence on the earth. Even from birth the wicked go astray, from the womb they are wayward, spreading lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake, like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears, that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful the enchanter may be. Break the teeth in their mouths, O God. Lord, tear out the fangs of those lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away. When they draw the bow, let their arrows fall short. May they be like a slug that melts away as it moves along like a stillborn child that never sees the sun. Before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns, whether they be green or dry, the wicked will be swept away. The righteous will be glad when they are avenged, when they dip their feet in the blood of the wicked. Then people will say, Surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. Psalm 59 Deliver me from my enemies, O God. Be my fortress against those who are attacking me. Deliver me from evildoers, and save me from those who are after my blood. See how they lie in wait for me. Fierce men conspire against me for no offense or sin of mine, Lord. I have done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Arise to help me, look on my plight. You, Lord God Almighty, you who are the God of Israel, rouse yourself to punish all the nations, show no mercy to wicked traitors. They return at evening, snarling like dogs and prowl about the city. See what they spew from their mouths. The words from their lips are sharp as swords, and they think, who can hear us? But you laugh at them, Lord. You scoff at all those nations. You are my strength. I watch for you. You, God, are my fortress, my God, on whom I can rely. God will go before me and will let me gloat over those who slander me. But do not kill them, Lord our shield, or my people will forget. In your might, uproot them and bring them down. For the sins of their mouths, for the words of their lips, let them be caught in their pride. For the curses and lies they utter, consume them in your wrath. Consume them till they are no more. 
Then it will be known to the ends of the earth that God rules over Jacob. They return at evening, snarling like dogs, and prowl about the city. They wander about for food, and how if not satisfied? But I will sing of your strength. In the morning I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. You are my strength. I sing praise to you. You, God, are my fortress, my God, on whom I can rely. Two Corinthians. Two Corinthians, chapter one. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all his holy people throughout Achaia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us again. On Him we have set our hope that He will continue to deliver us, as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world, and especially in our relations with you, with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so relying not on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. For we do not write to you anything you cannot read or understand, and I hope that as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we will boast of you in the day of the Lord Jesus. Because I was confident of this, I wanted to visit you first, so that you might benefit twice. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia, and to come back to you from Macedonia, and then to let you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I intended to do this? Or do I make my plans in a worldly manner, so that in the same breath I say both yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silas, and Timothy, was not yes and no. But in Him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through Him the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set His seal of ownership on us, and put His Spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. I call God as my witness, and I stake my life on it, that it was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy, because it is by faith you stand firm. Proverbs chapter 25 These are more proverbs of Solomon compiled by the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, 
To search out a matter is the glory of kings. As the heavens are high and the earth is deep, so the hearts of kings are unsearchable. Remove the dross from the silver, and a silversmith can produce a vessel. Remove wicked officials from the king's presence, and his throne will be established through righteousness. Do not exalt yourself in the king's presence, and do not claim a place among his great men. It is better for him to say to you, Come up here, than for him to humiliate you before his nobles. What you have seen with your eyes do not bring hastily to court. For what will you do in the end if your neighbor puts you to shame? If you take your neighbor to court, do not betray another's confidence, or the one who hears it may shame you, and the charge against you will stand. Like apples of gold in settings of silver is a ruling rightly given. Like an earring of gold or an ornament of fine gold is the rebuke of a wise judge to a listening ear. Like a snow-cooled drink at harvest time is a trustworthy messenger to the one who sends him. He refreshes the spirit of his master. Like clouds and wind without rain is one who boasts of gifts never given. Through patience a ruler can be persuaded and a gentle tongue can break a bone. If you find honey, eat just enough. Too much of it and you will vomit. Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house, too much of you, and they will hate you. Like a club or a sword or a sharp arrow is one who gives false testimony against a neighbor. Like a broken tooth or a lame foot is reliance on the unfaithful in a time of trouble. Like one who takes away a garment on a cold day, or like vinegar poured on a wound, is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Like a north wind that brings unexpected rain is a sly tongue, which provokes a horrified look. Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. Like a muddied spring or a polluted well are the righteous who give way to the wicked. It is not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honorable to search out matters that are too deep. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. 